Cool, here we go. All right, cool, so good to be here. Um, so, oh good, my slides are up there. So, a bit about me, I'm a um, senior developer slash developer advocate at Samsung for the web browser. Um, so, can I get a quick show of hands, like who's heard of our browser? So, like two thirds of you. Um, oh, thanks to the house lights. Um, who actually tests on our browser, like test their websites? Oh, wow, okay, that's, okay, it's not a lot of hands, but it's the most I've ever seen at a conference. Um, yeah, um, you probably should test on our browser, so we're the third biggest mobile browser in Europe. We tend to sit third in most countries after um, Chrome and Safari. These are the stats for the Netherlands. Um, so, like, we're like the big browser that no one's heard of. Um, because the people who are probably using us are probably your parents. Um, or just people who don't really change their browser so much. But we offer a whole bunch of really cool features which we innovate on, which hopefully um, will, um, will inspire you to give our website a go, try it out for yourself, maybe even use it. And if not that, test your products on it because lots of people are using it. Um, so our browser is a browser for Samsung phones. Um, we've also recently become a desktop browser um, because the S8 is also a desktop computer. Um, and we're also a VR web browser. So this is a full web browser which works in virtual reality. Um, it's pretty cool. Like This is a Space Jam website. This, is, this website is running on hardware which was inconceivable when, um, when it was built. It's running in a format like a virtual reality headset, which the developers probably never thought they'd, their website would be running in. And if this is not the most beautiful thing about the web, I don't know what is. Thank you. Yeah, web. Yeah, who here likes the web? Yeah, good, good crowd. Cool, so yeah, uh, because it's a new form factor, we've added some APIs for stuff that's relevant for virtual reality. So if you're, there's a JavaScript API for setting the surroundings. Um, this is like very simple, but it's like a nice touch to, if you're working with virtual reality to actually give a lot of feeling to your website. But the other cool thing, which one I really like, is that we've um, extended the video element to work natively in, um, in virtual reality. So if you go full screen, this 360 video um, just plays um, like normal, and it goes fully immersive, and it's hardware accelerated, so it's really performant and fantastic. And uh, if you're just shipping 360 video, it's a pretty nice way of doing it. Um, the APIs for these, um, the one for just setting the skybox is, in my opinion, a bad API. It's um, vendor prefixed. Um, we are looking to standardize these for when more VR browsers come around. I think there's a couple now. I think there's one other one these days, um, also for the Gear VR. Um, so yeah, that's pretty simple. Um, but for immersive video, if you just if you just tell the device that the video has is a left-right 3D 360 video, it will automatically be handled by the VR browser. Um, Samsung Internet on mobile will automatically give it a magic window kind of experience so the user can look around like this on the normal mobile web browser. So these are just like a few enhancements we're trying to bring to the web platform and hopefully get them adopted for improving how content can work with VR headsets. But that's not what we're really here for today. So this is what we're here for today. So this is a demo you can fire up on your phone right now if you want. Um, it's a very simple web VR demo. And what I've done here is you're viewing just a normal canvas um, with WebGL. And when you press the VR button, it goes fully immersive. And then you can press back to leave the experience. So it's... Um, and that's the core of what WebVR is. It's, 
It's enabling you to enter virtual reality in the web. And this should work on most smartphones, like it'll work on Android, it'll, um, the polyfill will work on Safari. Who here is using a daydream phone with a recent version of Chrome, like a Pixel or something? A few of you, yeah. So you're probably going to be using the native WebVR APIs, which are already in the browser. Um, the rest of you will be using the polyfill, which is exceedingly performant. Like, in some cases, it's just as or if not more performant than the native implementations due to some peculiarities of the hardware. Um, yeah. So here's, here's the support. Um, so if, actually, I'll just wait for people to um, view that last demo, because um, it's probably pretty cool, and you probably want to see it. There's the URL again. Is that working for most of you? That's really cool. If, if it's not working for one of your neighbors, just like feel free to, um, to show them uh, your phone or something. Just because it'd be a good idea just to get what we're talking about. And this is like, I mean, for a phone and a piece of cardboard, like this is a pretty incredible experience. Um, and when you start using the higher-end um, headsets, like the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift, you can really do some incredible things. Cool, so I'm going to move on now. Um, yeah, so the support is actually really good. Um, the WebVR standards are a collaboration between um, Mozilla, Google, um, Oculus, Samsung, um, I think um, some of the Edge team are in there as well. There's like a whole bunch of web and VR people working together to make something really amazing. And the polyfill, as I said, is fantastic. So you can ship it anywhere. Like I've seen someone getting a web VR experience working, albeit laggy, on a um, running Opera Mobile on a really um, old BlackBerry device. Like, it's, it's kind of astounding um, just how far you can reach today by making VR content. And hopefully by the end of the day, I aim to persuade you to actually give it a go and build something. Um, I'm not going to go into the standards too much. The standards are still, they're in progress. Um, so the, the current standards are called version 1.1. They've been stable for a few months now, but they're not, and they're sh shipping in lots of browsers, but they're not going to be the final iteration. Um, 2.0, which should be coming out hopefully later this year, um, will be the version which we're hoping to standardize within, within the W3C. And the goal of my talk today is to kind of show how WebVR fits in with some of the other web APIs and, um, and how they can help each other to do really cool things. So yeah, how does VR work? Well, how does the web VR APIs work? So you have a VR headset and potentially one or more controllers. There will be chips in the controllers to allow you to get the position and rotation information out of the controller. You take that into, into your big old JavaScript file, you do a bunch of stuff, you maybe pull in some other APIs, you show some data, you render it using WebGL to a canvas, and then you send that data back to the headset. So it's a pretty simple flow. You get position and rotation information from hardware, you use it to draw a pretty picture, and you send it to the hardware. The difficult bit is doing that at 240 times a second, so 120 hertz, two eyes. Um, which is a challenge, but there's lots of really awesome libraries out there, and the hardware we have, have in our pockets nowadays is like incredibly awesome. So like, it's, it's pretty doable. I mean, generally, the experience you saw earlier, was that like pretty laggy, or was that pretty OK? Yeah, it was pretty all right. Good. Um, 
But yeah, if you do it right, you get like a cool effect where how you move your head kind of matches up with what's happening in real world, and you kind of replace the user's environment. Um, so it's not just for VR2. Um, the, um, it's going to be extended into augmented reality as well. Um, part of the reason behind the 2.0 stuff is that the, the, the Edge team who are working on the HoloLens have got really involved. So WebVR will work on the HoloLens, which is super cool, because that's some um, really incredible hardware. I mean, Samsung is really cool hardware. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool stuff. Um, but the web VR doesn't do anything on its own. It's just an API for interacting with the hardware of controllers and headsets. So its, the, it's next best friend is, um, is WebGL. So who here is comfortable with WebGL? Great, I thought so. No one. <laughs> WebGL is hard, like capital H hard. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, WebGL is really, really difficult. Like, I've been, like, um, I did compute, loads of compute graphic stuff during my degree. I've written some OpenGL stuff. I still don't mess around with, with writing GL. It's a pain in the ass. It's too difficult. There are loads of cool libraries. Yay, libraries, extensible web and fun. Um, so yeah, um, so Play Canvas is kind of a Unity-like interface, um, and React VR is React, but for building virtual reality scenes, which is is pretty pretty awesome. Um, you guys like React generally? Uh, middle response. I'm kind of on the uh, side myself, um, but yeah. So what I really like, like my favorite one, is A Frame. So A-Frame is essentially a wrapper for 3.js. And 3.js is a really, really beautiful library um, for interacting with WebGL, with JavaScript. It's really nice. A-Frame takes it one step further and allows you to create custom web components for um, wrapping the 3.js APIs. So essentially, that means you write HTML you get a virtual reality scene that works out the box in virtual reality with all the difficult boilerplate taken care of. But it's super extensible, so there's nothing which you can't do in A-Frame, which you can do in 3.js or just writing with plain old WebGL. Very cool stuff. Um, and I think that's where I'm going to switch over to a different slide deck. So I have a cool demo here. Uh, can you guys see that URL? Um, cool, so if you go here, and I have a cool demo for you. Um, if you're not comfortable with being in VR, or um, uh, you don't want to wear a headset or see stuff, I've also got it open in a tab over here. Ah, oh, cool, it's kind of working, I think. Is that... Oh, yeah, sorry, here you go. Cool, so I'll give you, like, a couple of minutes to, like, Get that up. Um, OK, wow, this is good. So the last time I ran this demo, I ran it with 100 people. Um, so don't set my server on fire. Um, yeah, this is really awesome. It's really cool to see. 
This is. I'll just. There we go. Then we can see the. <laughs> so yeah, this is an example. This is like my first example of how virtual reality can work with other APIs. And this is this is like the simplest, like um, well not simplest, is kind of. I put a lot of work into it, but essentially what I'm doing, I'm using WebSocket to sync, sync the direction everyone's looking to their avatar. So if you look around, you can see what other people are looking at. Um, oh, oh, oh no, good, I thought I crashed the, oh, it did I went back. I can't use a Mac. Um, yeah. Hopefully I didn't just break all that. Oh my god, did my server just crash? <laughs> okay, is it still working? Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, that's the um, thing. So the idea is that I can now show you some cool demos in actual virtual reality. So um, I'm going to drop in... Um, so most stuff... The most things you get from virtual reality are um, like oh no, my thing isn't working. Replace. Uh, I'm pretty sure my server just crashed. <laughs> um, okay, right. Um, so yeah, um, simple things. So most libraries give you some way to draw primitive shapes. Boxes, spheres, toruses, tea, kettle, um, tea kettles, you know, primitive stuff. Um, tea kettles was kind of a pseudo joke, but I'm guessing you're not graphics developers, so um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you to the one person who got that. Um, yeah. So you get some basic stuff. You get lighting. So for example, notice there's some quite advanced shading going on here. I have some shadows on my, on my 3D elements. Um, if I look around, you guys are all in the shade. Um, yeah, my server definitely crashed. Um, and um, the rest of it um, is all nicely lit. You also get the ability to import 3D models. So let's import a 3D model. Um, replace. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty nice. There's lots of libraries for animation out there. So I really like using tween.js to do animations. Um, and you just like, you can, someone's found out you can use the keyboard. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, um, so yeah, there's loads of cool stuff for libraries and 3D models, um, and amazing stuff you can do using, like, normal libraries and, um, um, uh, and web VR. It's pretty cool. But this is only, like, half of the thing. So the... <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna, right, I'm just going to ignore that because it's going to keep distracting me. All right. So that's only half of, half of what is essentially an audiovisual experience. Like what you're aiming for is a feeling of immersion. So to, um, so to get the user feeling like they're inside your scene, they're actually, um, um, they're actually there. But if you can only see stuff, but you're hearing your surroundings, you're not going to get this feeling of immersion. So that's where web audio really comes in. Um, so, so thankfully, Ramira in the last, um, sorry, I'm always using people's Twitter handles. Um, um, in the last talk, 
covered all web, web audio stuff, so you're good with that now. Um, that's fine. So what you're trying to get is essentially um, uh, like three-dimensional audio for the user. So what's going on around them, so what they hear matches up with the scene around them. And this can be done in web audio using um, um, head-related transform functions, um, or something like that, HRTFs anyway. And the goal of these is to turn audio, like audio sprites and position them around the user, like give the illusion of being positioned around the user. And this can be done in web audio, and the ability to do this is built into 3.js and A-Frame and some other libraries. So it's a really difficult thing to do with math, but it's all kind of taken care of for you. So if I were to create a, a sound element and attach it to one of those speakers, I would automatically get working 360 audio in my scene. Um, so what I want to say is that you can build stuff that feels really immersive and really good and not have to like stress too hard about working on it because lots of people much cleverer than me have done it for us. So the other stuff you can do with um, the web audio APIs is that you can start pulling down content from other speakers. So one thing I've been messing with, unfortunately I couldn't get the demo working by this time, not that it would have mattered anyway because I can't demo it to a big audience, but is sending audio data down via WebSockets and then re-encoding it on the client side uh, so that you could have a big group of people like this and you could um, get people all talking to each other and having this experience of being in the same space even though they might be very far apart, which is known as co-presence. Um, so as well as um, the Web Audio APIs and WebGL, you probably want to do some other really, really cool stuff. And that's where one of my favorite things about the current state of web development comes into play. Like, have you guys seen the size of NPM? There is a bajillion packages on there for all kinds of stuff. There's stuff for importing esoteric data formats. There's stuff for um, displaying, um, for visualizing data, doing advanced animation. Like, you can do physics, like, really well on a phone in virtual reality. Like, it's, sorry, I love this demo, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> if anyone's still got the headset, it actually looks really cool in virtual reality as well, because it's like all proper 3D and stuff. And I spent ages on these shadows, and look, they work on the physics elements. Oh, love that. Sorry, I, I just like showing off the cool stuff. I, see, this is why I'm terrible at dinner parties, because I usually have like some cardboards or some headsets with me, I'm just like, check this out. And they're like, I'm trying to eat with the headset in their face. Um, so yeah, you can do really cool stuff. So physics, fancy shaders, like I've got some really cool dynamic shadows going on here. Um, some really awesome stuff. Uh, APIs for real-time data. So you've seen what WebSockets can do. Like I think at the maximum we had like over 200 people all in the same. Did it, was anyone see how big that number went? I wasn't paying attention. 173? Okay, that's pretty cool. Before, next time, don't use a free Heroku instance. Use actually pay for one. Um, yeah, it's... Um, I'm lucky I didn't run it off my netbook either, which I almost did, because that would be on fire now. Um, but <laughs> and, um, yeah, so real-time data. So WebSockets, really cool. Send lots of position data, sync up lots of avatars. Really awesome. You don't have to sync head positions as well. You can get, actually get some controllers, use some inverse kinematics, and get people rigged up to skeletons, and actually have like most of a presence inside of virtual reality. And this is all doable in the web platform. <laughs> so, so I'm going to... You've all had fun now. I'm going to... I'm gonna <laughs> so yeah, some of the other cool things you can do. So Sam I am. That's Sam I am. That's Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. Do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Would you like them here or there? 
I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them. Sam I am. So that's one of my favorite demos. Um, and it's incredible. And this is the great thing about this is that there's no there's no server involved doing the streaming of the audio. It's all done peer-to-peer -peer using WebRTC. And like, have any of you used WebRTC before to do stuff? So not many of you. Have you heard of WebRTC? OK, a few of you. That's good. So I'm introducing you to the coolest API in the web. Well, it's really cool if you're like me, and um, you're really, really cheap. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like spending a lot of money on servers. So the cool thing about WebRTC is it essentially works out, the, works out the route between two clients, and then it tells the clients, and then they speak to each other. Uh, so you have to have very little information sent to and from the server, and then the clients can send massive amounts of data. So who here uses, uses Google Hangouts in the web? Quite a few of you. Who here uses Skype in the web? OK, a fair few. Um, so yeah, that's WebRTC. So you can use it for transferring video and audio data. So in that, in that the demo, they were sending audio data from the Web Audio API via WebRTC to each other. They were then using the WebRTC API to um, the, the Web Audio API to do analysis on the sound to make the mouths move and like, make the voices higher and lower. It, um, they were using the WebRTC's data channels, which have just landed in Safari, um, as well as normal, all the other WebRTC stuff, in order to do um, um, like the position and rotation of the heads so they can look around and see what each other are doing. And in this case, it wasn't two people in the same room. It was two people in different Google campuses. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, actually, I think I had some more demos I wanted to show you here, actually. What ones do I have? Oh, yeah. So I was going to go into a bit about um, what A-Frame is. So A-Frame is what I used to build this. And um, as I said, it's HTML in um, um, HTML in it's HTML for building virtual reality scenes. It's really awesome. You can use it for just building 3D stuff as well. Um, so I'm going to. Cool. So um, I can show you some like basic stuff of how to use it now. Um, so let's drop in um, the most basic demo. So a box. So to show a box, it's literally a dash box. Um, here, I've given it a position to make it rise out the floor a little. Um, I'll just update that to make it a bit higher. OK, this is cool and boring and stuff. Um, like it's, it should, it's pretty declarative. It makes a lot of sense. But what I really, really like about it is that um, you can, because it's built on custom elements, it's hooked into Ooh. Um, it's hooked into um, the dev tools, so you can do something like this. So, developer tools, elements, because yeah, it's HTML, so a scene. This is too small, you cannot see that. Come on, plus, 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 plus. Is that okay? Cool. So this is a complicated uh, scene, but I'll see what I can do here. Oh, sorry, I probably shouldn't have said that. I wasn't paying attention. Um, so yeah, where am I dropping my stuff? Um, stage. That's the counter. That's the water. Slide target, here we go. So here's that cube I put in earlier. That's the light. I have to, oh, no, I need to open this. There we go, a box. So this is the thing I put in earlier. 
So I can just edit this using like, like it hasn't synced to the rest of you because it's not a separate thing hooked into my WebSocket implementation. It's in the dev tools. Um, oh, come on, that's really cool, right? Um, like, yeah, I can like, uh, I can add, like add a component for physics and, oh yeah, that's knocked up to the physics engine. Um, bad example, but I can, I, actually that should be hooked up to the physics engine, but like my other demos, but oh well. Um, like I can just like rewrite it so material, so I can change the color. Like, I didn't define a material, so A-Frame picked out some sensible defaults. Like, you don't have to define every little thing, which is usually the annoying thing about building virtual reality, building anything in 3D, is that you have to define every single property. So A-Frame takes a lot of that work out for you. Um, it's, it's web components, it's super extensible, it's really nice. Um, so, I was gonna... So this is like my, one of my favorite ways of working on A-Frame right now. So um, you can edit it using, um, um, yeah, you can just like fork a thing on Glitch, which is really nice. And I'm gonna go through what's in this scene so you can see how it's pretty, pretty accessible. So this is literally defining a box with a position and a rotation and a color. Then if I wanted to, um, same with the sphere, cylinder, plane, and the sky box, which is the big thing around you. But if you, if you like JavaScript, you can use like dot set attribute or dot inner HTML or dot insert adjacent HTML or all kinds of lovely like native DOM APIs to change your 3D scene, and it will update dynamically. But the other beautiful thing as well is that I know a few people in this room really like their frameworks. So because it's just HTML, you can maintain the state and keep everything updated using just an ordinary framework. Like you can use it with Vue or React or Angular or I don't, I can't think of any other stuff in my head. Any of the other 38,000 frameworks out there, like, you can use them to, to manage your state and do really cool stuff. So if you want to build something really quite advanced with some, like, really um, difficult state management, use your nor you can use your normal web development tools, your normal web development practices to build virtual reality. And if that's not, like, the coolest thing ever, I don't know what is. Um, so... I should probably share, I'm gonna tweet out the link to this, but this is on Glitch. Have you, got, have you heard of Glitch before? Okay, a few of you. So Glitch is pretty new, it's really, really cool, and basically allows you to fork and edit code in your web browser and then show it live. Um, so if I remix this, boom. Like it gives me a new URL, guiltless drawbridge. Um, and I can change the color, color of the sky to go to sky blue. No, not hash sky blue, sky blue. And then show, boom, like, it updates. Like, it's a really great way to work. So if you just want to get stuck into building some virtual reality stuff and don't want to worry about downloading libraries, check out A-Frame on Glitch. Um, it's a great way just to get started. Mess around, change some values, like just try breaking it, try building something, have fun with it. Like, this is all meant to be fun and awesome. Um, not like, yeah, just enjoy it. I don't want this to be work because like that's why we're, that's why we're web developers. Like we got into this because building for the web is very approachable. You can. You can, you can start building for the web with just a text editor, and this kind of builds out of that. Um, yeah, so that's cool stuff. Um, so the point I, wanted to, I want to make is, um, 
like web vr isn't just for web vr content like it's not just it's not just for the tech people or the the people making games at the moment who are, we're trying not trying to get them into the web i want to get you into vr like that's like these are web vr is as much web as it is vr It gives us new ways to think about these APIs. So whereas WebRTC before was largely used for um, video calls and conferencing, it can now be used for syncing up avatars. Um, web sockets can be used to, to keep rooms full of people um, like in sync. It's like you can use web audio not for for producing like great sounds in a web page, but you can use it to make a scene immersive. But it also gives us a new way to think about virtual reality itself. Because right now, the biggest movers and shakers in VR are the people who, um, who have come from the video game side of it. Um, so they have lots of experience. Oh, and also people in film, um, in the film industry as well. So people who have large backgrounds of, of working with, with graphics. Um, but so, so a lot of the thinking that's going on with what, what VR should be is coming out of these fields who people think VR should be for gaming or for film or... Um, and I would like to think it can be for far more than that. Like everything we use the web for today, we can do for VR. So social media in VR could evolve to having your own 3D representation on the web, like your own 3D space, a representation of the stuff you like. Like, I want to see GeoCities-like pages in virtual reality. Like, I want to see stuff that's trashy with, like, big, like, I like the Matrix, or a giant Matrix poster on the wall, and, like, some, like, a 3D model of a Ferrari in the middle, and, like, a big horse. Like... I want to see normal people building, building web VR. I want to see small and medium companies like working out how virtual reality can work for themselves. But it also makes us think about the web in a different way. Like, have you guys heard of progressive enhancement? Yeah. So progressive enhancement, for those who didn't cheer, is where you make your website um, degrade beautifully. So, so where the features are available, it works fantastically. Where they're not available, it still works pretty well. Um, so at the end of the day, your content always arrives. But in virtual reality, that takes on a whole new meaning because some of the features we're going to have is stuff like does this computer have a really high-end graphics card? Or is it a mobile phone? Is, does the headset they're using have positional tracking, so I know where they are in, a, in the room? Or does it only have rotation tracking, like a cardboard or like one of the phone headsets, so, um, so I can only know what they're looking at? Does it have a full suite of position-tracked controllers or like scanning their hands in real time? Or is it something where the user can only interact by looking at something and tapping on the headset. Because WebVR allows you to build one VR scene and ship it to mobiles and desktops alike. Like, I optimized this scene for mobile, but you could open it on a desktop computer and it would still work as well. If there was someone here with HTC Vive, they could sit in that corner and fire it up and they could use it. So it's, um, it's the kind of thing worth thinking about. Because like, there's a lot of different hardware involved, and I don't recommend like, supporting it all. But the biggest hardware right now is going to be the lower-end hardware. So the Google Cardboard has tens of millions of devices out there because they're made of cardboard, and anyone can make them. There are as of the beginning of this year, there are 5 million Gear VRs out there. We have 1 million people regularly using our browser um, in virtual reality. Um, so the audiences are out there, and they're big. And 
the web is the biggest audience of them all. So if, if you want to build something in virtual reality, aim for the cardboard and gear VR and daydream users, because the, that's where the audience is right now. And um, I don't think we're going to see that change anytime soon, because it's the most convenient way to use it. As beautiful as it is to use a HTC Vive. Actually, have you guys used like, VR before, aside from like, the cardboard? and Like a couple of you, yeah. And who here, ha who here has a cardboard? So a few of you have a cardboard. Right, that's good. And like, what you need to develop virtual reality is like a headset and a phone, right? And that's enough to get you started. And if you want to do the advanced stuff, yeah, you can, you can invest in a high-end VR rig. But most of your users aren't going to be using that. So like, it's not an expensive investment. In fact, you can all go home today and start working on virtual reality. So go home today and start working on virtual reality. <laughs> cool, so I just got, um, I'm going to skip through all this. I've got, yes, I'm running a hackathon, which is why I left that final comment. Um, please, if you go home and build something today, submit it to the hackathon. It's made for, for, for newer people getting to VR. Um, there's information in there on, like, how to, on how to contact like, a whole bunch of people, and we can help you build stuff and get you started, point you at some resources. You all have cardboards, but if you didn't have one, I would post one to you. Um, and yeah, so please get involved. That's going to be really cool. Um, who here is from a hardware manufacturer? OK, not many of you. But I was going to say, like, if you are uh, into building displays or VR equipment, and it seems the, the web VR APIs don't look like they're going to fulfill your needs, Please get in contact, um, or please start contributing to the standards. They're, um, they're, st they're still not finalized. Version um, 2.0 is going to come out later this year. Um, like it's important to get your feedback in now um, so that stuff gets out there. But even if you're not, even if you just want to get involved, and like if this talk is like lit a fire in your belly and you like want to get involved, Read, um, look through some of the issues on GitHub, see what people are talking about, see where this standard is going. Like, um, it's an amazing community of people from a variety of different companies working on it. And finally, please give feedback on this talk so we can learn and improve and do like, more stuff, because I love doing this and I want to continue doing it. It's really cool. Thank you. That was great. Come and join me here. These bar stools are very nice. So all these amazing web VR efforts, is that part of the reason why Samsung decided to create its own browser, to be able to experiment with that? Um, it's like one of the reasons. Like we, so we created our own web browser so that we could um, make the most of the Samsung hardware. Um, so like the, um, the biometric features and um, optimizing for like, the Samsung processors and graphics chips and stuff like that. Um, virtual reality is just one part of it. Um, like our VR web browser came out since um, about this time last year. Um, so it's like one of the older ones. Like we were the first VR web browser and we were one of the um, first browsers along with Chrome and Firefox to get in on the getting on the standards. So um, it's one of the things we're really involved in, and of course we're involved in the, the, the standards discussions for that, and the standards bodies for progressive web apps and web payments and stuff. There were a lot of questions on Twitter, and lots of feedback for you to read. Um, oh, cool. But one that uh, particularly resonated with me is, we've seen a lot of impressive yet static demos. What if you want to touch something in the vir virtual reality world? I suppose you would need some additional hardware for that? Uh, yeah, so you need some kind of controller. So there's now a controller for Gear VR, which should be working in our browser soon. Um, but it does work in the other VR browser for Gear VR. Um, the, Chrome, uh, Chrome 
on Android, on Daydream devices, works with the Daydream controller. Um, the Oculus Touch controllers work. The HTC Vive controllers work. Like, they all just come through the GamePad API. Um, yeah, they w it works. You can do it. You don't need an additional library. Like, it's, it's in there from the start as part of the API. Um, if you want to do an A-frame, it is literally one line of HTML. You drop in, like, I think it's like A-controllers or something. And whatever controllers you're using, they'll be represented in the scene. And then you can start adding events for listening, for pulling the various triggers or pushing a button to allow you to pick up objects and move them around and stuff. Like, it's, yeah. You don't, you don't have to just do static stuff. Cool. Um, so what do you think is the main, well, or the most important difference between WebVR 2.0 and 1.1? Um, so there's lots of the... I'm not going to go into it in detail, because like, I didn't explain what 1.1 was in detail, but the main differences is for stuff like um, um, the, the HoloLens, like world positioning, and um, there are some APIs which turned out to be redundant, which are being removed. Um, so, so there's a bit of cleanup involved there as well. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Please you, give her a warm hand. Hello.